technique is getting more important, say, for autonomous driving. And the talk will be given by uh, Gil Elbaz. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, hello, my name is Gil Elbaz, and I'm from the Technion Israel. I'm here to present my research on 3D point cloud registration for localization using a deep neural network autoencoder. So our main motivation is self-localization uh, independent of GPS or external signals. Imagine that you have a map of a very large area in your head and you want to look around you locally and understand where you are and, and in what orientation. So more specifically, the scenario that we're looking at is a large global scene. These are some houses and a small hillside. And we can capture that scene from the sky using a point cloud um, and understand the geometric information uh, in the global scene. So this is a global scene of uh, 1.5 million points. And we also have a uh, local scene um, captured also with a point cloud of around uh, 150,000 uh, points. And our goal is to find the location and orientation of the local point cloud from within the global point cloud. Now the main challenges for the registration are uh, to, to create a registration that is completely independent of external information or local prior knowledge beyond the fact that the center of the local point cloud is somewhere within the map or somewhere within the global point cloud. Uh, we want to create an algorithm that is scalable to extremely large point clouds, which is a very challenging subject when dealing with point clouds. Um, we want hypothetically to get to um, an algorithm that can work with uh, 100 million points. Uh, and we want to create a robust algorithm to, uh, of course, rotation and location, but in addition uh, to point density, noise, and occlusions. So this is the algorithmic overview. Uh, it's called LORAX, so localization by registration using a deep autoencoder reduced cover set. Um, naming is very important in academia. Um, so we have two inputs. We have the global point cloud and the local point cloud, and we return as output the uh, affine transformation matrix that brings us from the local point cloud's um, arbitrary original uh, coordinate system to the global point cloud coordinate system. So here's our local and global point cloud. Um, our first stage is to subdivide the point cloud into local clusters that we call super points. Um, this is a critical stage for dealing with very large scale uh, point clouds. Um, and it's very simple, we'll get into it in a moment. Then we take each super point and we individually want to uh, describe its geometry using a low dimensional descriptor. So here we use a uh, deep autoencoder to get a 10 dimensional descriptor uh, of the geometry of the super point. And then we want to find uh, super points with similar geometries between the local and the global point clouds and match between them, then uh, get the course registration and finally fine tune it with ICP. Uh, so let's get into the uh, random sphere cover set. Uh, this is an extremely simple algorithm, but we think can be very useful for many applications dealing with large point clouds. So we define a constant cover sphere radius and while the total coverage of points in the, in the point cloud is under 95%, we select a non-covered point and create a super point coverage within the sphere of the selected point. And we iterate on this process again and again. Now, for this to be useful, we need to answer a, um, a specific question of how many super points are created given a pair of uh, point clouds. So we can define the uh, volume of the cover sphere as a function of the volume of a sphere encompassing the local point cloud divided by M, which is the number of local to global connections required for the transformation. And we have safety coefficients uh, uh, relating to the worst case scenario for the density of random sphere packing, uh, for the density, uh, meaning the density of random sphere packing in 3D Euclidean space, um, which assumes that there's no overlap, which we allow in our algorithm. Um, and also the, there's uh, the safety coefficient that relates to the uniqueness of the geometry that is currently being hand tuned which is the number two. Um, so we can look at uh, the number of new points covered on each iteration. Um, this is a uh, estimation, um, but we get a, uh, uh, a function that is dependent on the ratio between the volume of the cover sphere and the uh, volume of the convex hull of uh, encompassing the global point cloud. Um, this has uh, geometric um, properties that are uh, great for the upper bounds and we can uh, then receive an upper bounds that is dependent on a constant multiplied by the ratio between the number of points in the global point cloud and the number of points in the local point cloud. 
Now this is extremely interesting because it means that the upper bounds isn't dependent on the total number of points in the point clouds. Um, so we get uh, from this uh, upper bounds around 375 and empirically in the example that I'm showing you, uh, we have around 90 super points. Um, as we fill the space of a sphere encompassing the global point cloud more uniformly, uh, we should get a number that is much closer to the upper bounds. Um, there's a full, uh, uh, full description of this in the uh, supplementary material on GitHub. You're welcome to check it out. Um, so we've in turn turned a uh, 1.5 million points into only 90 super points. And for the rest of our algorithm and maybe your algorithms in the future, uh, you can look only at the super points. So now we want to describe each super point uh, using a uh, feature, a uh, low dimensional feature. We want to normalize the location and orientation of each super point. Um, and we do that uh, using uh, the, an assumption of a 3D manifold in, in space. Uh, and we align the z-axis to the third eigenvector of the approximated covariance matrix, and then the x-axis to the maximum bin of a polar histogram around the z-axis. Uh, we then filter low-density point clouds, and we filter out uh, point clouds that are made up of flat surfaces, uh, which hold very little geometric information. There's no way to tell the difference between a point cloud, a super point on that wall, and a super point on the other wall. So those are filtered out. And, and in addition, we filter out common super points um, using a PCA saliency test that you can see in our paper. Um, so we project the super point onto a two-dimensional depth map image, um, where each pixel uh, corresponds to the height of the point that's projected mm -hmm. onto it. And then we use a uh, uh, simple max filter to spread out the uh, height results. We assume that uh, surfaces in the real world don't, aren't made up of uh, individual sparse points. Um, so now we can input our, uh, now we train our uh, uh, deep autoencoder um, using the super points from the global point cloud ahead of time uh, and from previous global point clouds. In addition, we can use uh, synthetic data very easily um, to train this. Now we use a very uh, small and con uh, restrained um, deep autoencoder, and this actually provides us with good results, and we'll get into that in a moment. Um, so when we want to use the trained model, we input a new super point into the encoder, and we receive a 10-dimensional compact descriptor um, of the super point. Um, these are real super points. We have uh, uh, in red the, hi the highest points, and in blue is uh, zero height. Um, we can see that we, we insert the super point and we get a uh, compact uh, representation, which is five by two. I expanded it a bit for visualization. Um, you can see that they're each different. And then we have the output reconstruction, which is not pixel-wise to the input. Um, but what it does give us is a robustness to small translations and rotations, as well as small noise. Um, we'll get the same compact representation. Um, so yeah, so this actually gives us the best results. Uh, we can look at what we've learned. We um, input into the uh, different entrances into the uh, decoder um, strong activations, and we get an activation map for each one. And we can say that we have a nonlinear superposition of these activations that represent our super points later on. Um, so we have now the super points in 10 dimensional space. We use K nearest neighbor uh, to find the uh, closest points uh, within the feature space between the local and the global super points and we connect the candidates in Euclidean space. Um, sorry, we, we have uh, K connections for each of the uh, uh, super points in the local point clouds that have passed the filtration stage. Um, so we now use a local ransack search within the candidate space. We find the, f the five top independent course registration results and we activate ICP on each of them. Um, and then we return the best total affine transformation matrix. So these are some semi-synthetic uh, results. This is real, real aerial scans, but we've cropped from the aerial scans uh, local point clouds um, and added uh, different types of noise to test uh, the weaknesses of the algorithm. So we've tested uh, density shifting, uh, random noise, and occlusions. Um, these are binary tests, uh, 50 tests, and we've, we can see that we have a low um, low effect due to density shifting, but a uh, large effect due to occlusions. Um, we assume, though, that in real life, uh, there aren't going to be uh, such large occlusions on all of the super points. So because they're individual, um, this shouldn't really affect the algorithm um, in real application. Uh, so now we've, uh, we tested our algorithm on uh, real data, um, on LiDAR uh, scans. Uh, we use the challenging point cloud for registration. 
uh, which took a vehicle and, uh, and captured uh, 30 plus uh, LIDAR scans uh, of the same outdoor scene uh, in multiple seasons. Um, and this is perfect for us because we can now test our uh, uh, registration between a local point cloud in the summer and a global point cloud in the winter of the same scene. Um, now, these are uh, uh, some uh, results that we've, we've uh, received. Uh, we tested our algorithm against the key point plus FPFH algorithm, which, is, which was the current state of the art. Um, and uh, we have also tested against different combinations of our, our algorithm uh, with the, uh, the, the other variants. Again, we measure here uh, the rotational error and the translational error, um, as well as a binary success rate. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. We have time for questions. Frank? Yeah, so um, how do you know the super point calculation is repeatable between the local scan and the global scan? Um, I'm not sure if uh, re repeatable. Well, it seems that they could cover different parts. Exactly. So okay. I'm sorry. That that was uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so on the uh, local point cloud, we actually uh, use the uh, randomosphere cover set multiple times. Um, it's relatively, it's extremely cheap um, because it's uh, it should be like an order of magnitude smaller than the global point cloud. So this gives us a probability to get uh, good. Uh, overlaps between the local and the global point cloud. Any other questions? Are you good? Um, how, how easy is it, do you think, to extend this to indoor? Because at some point you make height maps, and I think that's going to be problematic in dealing with indoor objects. Yeah, so um, one, of the, one of the assumptions here is that there's interesting geometry in the scene, and that's probably why it's better for outdoor environment. Um, there's definitely methods that we're, we're working on to try and uh, make it more general to also fit indoor scenes. But indoor scenes really do have many walls and flat surfaces, so a different approach might be, or a, a, some kind of combined approach might be um, better for indoor. All right, let's thank that. Have a question? Okay, one more last question. So I have a very quick question. So what is the original density difference between your uh, Aerial point cloud and ground-based point cloud. Um, okay, so th this really depends on the instrument that you're working with. Um, but what we want to do is we can actually train the network uh, using the uh, data from the tool that we're scanning with, and that can really provide us with a, a good point cloud representation, um, depending on uh, whichever uh, scanning tool we're using. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.